I'll introduce Jean-Michel Gillot as a professor at AMT France. Approximately 30 years of experience in odor and odor measurements. Jean-Michel is the coordinator of experts for standardization about odors in France and then involved in standardization in European level. Okay. Jean-Michel Gillot, he will talk, give us an overview of odor legis legislation around the world. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Ton. Uh, so, okay, I just replaced Anna Bokova <laughs> for this talk. Okay, and of course, uh, I apologize because uh, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare everything, but uh, okay, it's just an overview uh, and just to open the discussion and to let you know uh, about uh, the article uh, about this subject. So, we wrote uh, an article, uh, of course, during several years, uh, and it was published at the, at the beginning of this year, so you have some values here. What we can say that is, uh, okay, it's uh, the work of a big team. Uh, we represent here 15 countries. We have an article with uh, more or less 200 references. And the objective is typically to have a global overview of uh, what is done about uh, regulation. So just to illustrate, as you can see, you can have very different approaches. Uh, I will not detail, of course, these two examples, but in Germany and Colombia, you can see, okay, in one case, you can use the grid measurement, and Ralph just talked about uh, this approach. Uh, you can see here uh, the opposite way, you know, you have complaints and, and after uh, a kind of protocol uh, that is described in Colombia. Another example is typically that you can find some uh, evaluation of offensiveness. Uh, it's typically the case in uh, Flanders region, in Belgium. Uh, so you have a kind of weight that is different depending on your source. Uh, and of course, uh, we all know that offensiveness is a key factor uh, in terms of annoyance. Well, if we continue to have, to have this big uh, overview, uh, as you can see, and it's a, a real illustration of the complexity, when you have big countries like US, uh, you can see that you have different regulation state by state. And so you can imagine if in one country you cannot uh, have an harmonization, it's quite difficult to have the harmonization between different countries. And uh, that's uh, typically uh, the main problem. We just cite here Japanese uh, approach that is globally very different because also typically different in terms of uh, measurement. So, we all know uh, some factors that are important for estimation of, uh, of other impact and so on. So, we all know the FIDO uh, or FIDO uh, factors, you know. So, sometimes we change uh, the last one, receptor, uh, because, okay, it's a location, it's a receptor, it's a sensitivity of the receptor and so on. So it's quite complex for the last one. But it's still difficult to integrate all these aspects. And typically because, you know, uh, a frequency, maybe if you have a measurement uh, somewhere, you can estimate with a mathematical value. Uh, the intensity is just a perception. So, of course, in that case, how can you combine uh, this kind of criteria that are basically very different. So, what can we do also? Uh, that's okay. We have, it's not the case in all countries, but in many countries, you know, the, you have the experience of affected citizens and you have the assessment by officials. 
uh, I can just talk about my, my country in France, you know. Uh, some regulations are decided by the Ministry of Environment without consulting uh, experts and, and so on. So they decide sometimes and okay, it can be good or not. Uh, so I suppose that it's a, a problem in, in uh, a lot of countries. Globally, we have some standardized protocol, of course. We have olfactometry, we have plume and grid measurements. Uh, so it's quite a good answer uh, to subjective experience when, when you are exposed to odor. So it's a, it's a good point. Uh, but we have still the problem that, okay, uh, we don't have a common approach for policy because the, the culture of different countries are very different and the philosophies are also different. So, and of course, uh, we have a difference uh, between legislation and the capability to enforce this legislation in, in some countries. So just to cite what is still uh, in, in discussion worldwide, more or less, uh, you know about planning. Okay, we also have uh, the problem about planning uh, versus regulation. So, what is the compatibility uh, between these uh, two approaches? Uh, do okay. So, we we can also propose a, a draft for a regulation when, when we don't have. And sometimes you have also to discuss about. Uh, the cost of regulation, you know, because you need uh, a, a lot of measurement and the cost of no regulation if you have impacts. So that's a discussion depending, of course, on countries. Typically, we have also to really speak about the same thing. Uh, you know, do we speak about air quality? Do we speak about emission? Uh, and of course, sometimes, you know, people are, are talking about uh, odor annoyance and we don't know exactly where do, do, do we put uh, uh, the, the look. Uh, is it at the emission or in the environment? And of course, in some countries, you have an approach that is made activity by activity. Uh, typically, it, it, it's the case in, in France, uh, so it's not a global one, but it's defined by the type of activity. Of course, uh, if we have to propose regulation, we need uh, metrics and so indicators. Uh, so we can have also a discussion about that. Uh, and the last point is the, also the link between the, uh, regulation and accreditation. Uh, be because of course, uh, it's also not uh, always working in the same way, uh, depending on countries. And uh, of course, the objective is to have a list of common recommendations uh, for the regulation. Uh, and okay, also to have a quite uh, exchanges of uh, best practice between uh, countries. So, you, you know, it's uh, globally the context. What we can say that, okay, with all regulations uh, we have, we have in fact some answers, even if it's not perfect, uh, yeah, you, you know. Uh, we have some answers that can be uh, unfortunately dependent, depending on the country or, or the state. Uh, we can have approach based on emission at the source. So it can be uh, based on other concentration. That is uh, what uh, the domain of interest, of course, but sometimes it can be uh, about uh, uh, chemical odorants. You have the approach about uh, with people exposure. Uh, so it's uh, another possibility. And of course, uh, you can also use uh, chemical analysis, but uh, 
we all know that okay, with chemical analysis, we just have a, a value of uh, air quality and not of other uh, exposition or not other exposure. So, of course, this last point is uh, less regarded. Okay, yes, I know it's, it's very long, so I will try to, to do my best. Uh, so, we have to work, still to work on the relationship between uh, chemical aspect and, and other uh, impact. Uh, I can, we can work also on uh, separation distance and also uh, to work on models. So if I go on to, to respect the time, um, the main thing that are important here is to have quite integrated approaches in, in order to, to have a, a global view of uh, other complaints and other nuisance. And typically, uh, feeder or feeder factors could be uh, a way to integrate uh, a lot of things. So. What we can do is that, okay, regulation is still uh, a big problem. Uh, we have some regulation in different countries uh, and a lot of things are interconnected, you know, uh, the regulation, the policy, the economy of the country of the, or of the region. Uh, globally, we have nice protocol for measurements, uh, so that's important. We can use uh, dispersion modeling also to to help for, for that. Uh, we know the difference because between odor measurement and odorant measurement. Uh, we can integrate uh, the citizen uh, perception, okay? Uh, and of course, we can also use the feeder or feeder factors. I just want to, to finish to say, okay, we arrived to build uh, something uh, quite universal uh, for measurement and monitoring because typically with, with the SEN uh, we propose a standard, standard in measurement and of course for regulation it's just a, a, a huge problem because uh, we cannot do that because it's very complex and due to all the examples uh, of history, of uh, different way of thinking in all countries, we cannot imagine to do that. So on behalf of all uh, co-authors of uh, the, this paper, thank you. And of course, if you want to know more about this regulation, you can uh, have a look uh, on the publication. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Michel. You told us we are on the way to come to a common approach with this conference. Okay. Are there questions? Ah. Yes. Yael. Yael Jean. Citizens, in fact, it's, you don't have a, uh, okay, it's, it, it depends. You know, you can collect, okay, uh, complaints and then try to, to build your regulation based on, uh, on, uh, on, on your complaints. Globally, it's not the main way that is de decided. Uh, as mentioned by Ralph previously, you know, you can fix uh, a protocol. He, he, he talked about the example of, of the grid measurement, and so you do not consider complaints of people, but just uh, the evaluation of, of us experts. Okay, but in some countries, you, you, you take into account the complaints, and, uh, and then you try to, to develop uh, your regulation based on number of complaints and, and so on. That's, that's the main problem, you know, we have different input that we can use and the objective, depending on countries, is different uh, and typically linked to economy and, and so on. So sometimes we all know that in some countries, economy will be stronger 
than complaints. So the regulation is adapted for that. Now, one more question. There's time for one more question. Then I will take the chance for me to give you a question. Okay. Uh, you talked about regulation, the necessity of regulations and accreditation, but we, we shouldn't prevent improvements in research. We should go new ways, but we need integration of experts in regulations in practical work. That's a gap. Yeah, yeah, yes, that, uh, that's a problem. Sometimes it's regulation is just decided by officials, by politicians, and, uh, and sometimes, okay, they have quite a good view and they go in the right way, but sometimes uh, I always, <laughs> it's just, it just uh, something, I always give, give the example. I, I had to, um, uh, to explain um, air, air quality problems, in, including order to new inspectors in France 10, 10 and 15 years ago. But even my slides, uh, had to be uh, approved by the Ministry of uh, Environment. So they say, okay, you can show this one and, and uh, we skip this one. Yes. So they, you, that... you know, so when you build your inspectors li like that, you know, it just decided by somebody who don't know nothing <laughs> about the subject, it's quite difficult after to propose uh, some regulations. Thank you very much, okay. Jean-Michel. I can understand your opinion. Okay, thank you. Thank you.